continue in English? Yeah, yeah. We'll continue in English, don't worry. Now, please, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me say thank you to uh, Evo and your group for inviting me here. I wish I had money in your bank, but unfortunately, I don't. I have a, another treasure that I carry in my head that I would like to share with you. And what makes me even more happy is that I see a lot of children around here. Now, I have dedicated my life, or whatever is left of it, to the children of the future. Because I have spent 35 years of my life working in an industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and they do nothing but annihilate the population of this world. And why do they do that? Because they want to make money, 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 money. They don't care about your lives. They only care about their wallets. Now whatever I tell you here today is not something that I dreamed about or observed somewhere. It's something that I have done myself. I have been just as criminal as they are. My hands are just as dirty as these people. Now, all of you sitting here, answer me a question. When you go to the doctor, he looks at you, stethoscope, laboratory tests, machine tests this were those tests by the way is to make money then he tells you you're sick here's a prescription go to the pharmacy and take this medicine one tablet three times a day what do you do tell me they don't throw it away all of you here you go to the pharmacy and you get your medicine and you take it like the good citizen but when you go to the car company to buy a car, you ask the salesman questions. If you don't get what you want, you don't buy the car. So why don't you ask the doctor what is it he's giving you? The reason I'm telling you this is because only you have the power to stop these criminals with what they're doing in the pharma industry. Because you are not sick people. Any you season? are consumers. You are consumers. And the pharma industry makes money because they tell everybody that you are sick. Now, you can ask me the question, why have you been doing this then? There are several reasons, and I'm not making any excuses. I was a bad boy. I was colored. I was young. I'm still colored. I got scared last night when the good doctor over here told me I look a little pale. I said, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, but she fixed it. It's okay. Well, at least up till now, it's coming. Anyway, the reason was that I was young, I was a colored man in the white world. I had to survive. The pharma industry gave me a good job. And I felt that I was in medicine because that's what I studied. So I started as a salesman. What was it uh, as a salesman. So <laughs> I, I had a good salary. I had the car, the expense account. And as I moved up in my career, where I eventually became a director for a company uh, in Sweden. The, the, the affiliate company of one of the largest and most evil pharma corporations in the world, Eli Lilly and Company. You may have heard of them. They're evil. And I, I can say that because I was part of the evil. So in those days, the money, I've been around the world, 
You ask me all the top hotels in the world. You ask me about all the big airports in the world, gourmet restaurants. I had a golden key to the wine cellar of the opera cellar in Stockholm, Sweden. The uh, opera cellar is where the Nobel people have dinner. I mean, you can go in that restaurant. The, well, the Princess Christina was sitting next to me at another table the other uh, one time. Uh, so all of this was offered to me on a plate. In I... So, just like Eva give Adam the apple, I had an apple too. Anyway, to make a long story short, I had a career. I did a lot of bad things. Sure. They fired me. I started my own company, worked for several other pharma companies, big ones, world players. Then I met a German woman 15 years ago. And uh, she said, I have to come to live in Germany because she's not going to move to Florida. And I said, OK. So I came to Germany. I retired, officially retired. I played golf. I was a good gespielt. golfer in Germany. And I relaxed myself. Then I had a heart attack, then I had a second heart attack, and now I can't get no heart attack anymore. I have, I have a titanium battery right here. So I can drop here today and my heart will still beat. <laughs> That's just a joke. Anyway, no, it's not a joke. I have a pacemaker, but I mean the whole... Anyway somebody the power I don't know some people say God some people say Jesus some people say this I call it the power the almighty power blessed me and my wife with a child I was 62 years old this child is now four and a half now when this child was born he went to the pediatrician after the uh, uh, six months to a year they make a checkup. The doctor checked the boy and said, yeah, he's healthy, he's fine. Now I need to give him his Imf cocktail for Marsan. Now I have told my wife, nobody, no doctor, no professor, no nobody gives my child any kind of medication unless they discuss it with me and I approve it. Now this doctor, well, apart from being lucky that I wasn't there, she threw my wife and child out of the clinic and said, we only treat vaccinated children. When my wife came home and told me that, I considered how lucky this woman was because if I were there, Believe me, I would have strangled her. How dare she refuse to have my child come to this clinic and she's practicing as a doctor. What happened to the Hippocrates, the oath of Hippocrates? When you become a doctor, you swear the oath. Primum non nocere. The patient comes first. And that made me mad. So I researched this lady and I found that she was sitting in a committee or on a committee with a politician and members of the pharma company that made the inf, the vaccine. And they're propagating to the government in Germany to introduce mandatory vaccination. So I started to do some research on what's going on in Germany in the medical business. I've never worked there. I only lived there. I got my pension from Sweden, by the way. I didn't, uh, I don't get anything from the uh, German state or anybody. I found out also that general practitioners, just like this woman and other doctors, were prescribing psychotropic drugs to children. Shortly after that, I read in an article that was posted from uh, the European Medical Association that they were going to approve 
the drug Prozac to give to children. Uh, it's fluctin, fluctin in, uh, in uh, Schweiz, uh, in, in Deutschland. They were already prescribing another one called Ritalin. Now, I started to see red, and I, all the memories, all the memories from the first day I joined the company as a salesman, it all started to come back. And I started seeing shadows at night, people dying from taking medication that was legalized because I had bribed the Swedish government to get the Sulasso for Prozac in Sweden. Now can you imagine that? Sweden is reputedly one of the cleanest, most transparent countries in the world. They have the Nobel Prize of medicine. And what I didn't think of at the time, the Americans, uh, my friends were talking about them. Sorry, Jim. They love the prestige of the Nobel Prize. That is why it was important for them to get the registration of Prozac uh, in my... Sweden. That was one of the major things that I did because the company told me, your career may depend on it. Now, I can't go through all the <laughs> items of corruption I've been involved in. It's too many. I'll have to spend a couple of weeks here. But you can read about it in my book that's selling over there. It's called Neben Wirkung Tod. It's in German. And the English version last week is now as an e-book for any of you who might be interested in that. Now, as my colleague Rima was referring to uh, earlier in her speech, what is the pharma industry doing to us? They're the most powerful industry in the world. They sleep in the same bed with governments. They use corruption to get what they want. Corruption involves money. Cool. They have lots and lots and lots of money, and that is how they make their money. Now. They also kill more people than the wars we have in the world. But long term, they punish you and then they kill you. And that has to stop. We need, the, according to the way things are today, we need the pharma industry because there are some good things out there. Uh, uh, sorry, Rima. Uh, I might be contradicting everything you said, but there are some things there that is good, but most of it is rubbish. They're not interested in curing any disease you may have. They're more interested in making you get diseases. They're interested in symptomatic treatment. They want patients who are diabetics, cardiology patients, Parkinson's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, arthrosis, because you live a long time and the drugs that you have to take, you take that for the rest of your life. So let me ask you the question, when, is there anybody in here that can tell me when was the last time you heard or read that a pharma company has come with something that cures a disease. I give you a hundred euro right now if you tell me. They don't cure anything, they make you sick. Now, this company that I, I talked about, the Eli Lilly and Company, remember that name. They have been doing this for years and years and years. Three weeks ago, I received a mail I get alerts on uh, whatever is happening in the industry from uh, various places. Eli Lilly and company was fined Strafgeld by the Justice Department in, in, in Pennsylvania in America. 1.4 milliarden dollar 
for one product that I have written about in this book two years ago. That product was used to treat, it was a neuroleptic, a psychodrug, that was approved to be used on schizophrenics. So this company wasn't satisfied with that. They went and sold the drug to uh, old people's home because they say it wouldn't cost so much to be there in this ho home because you give them this pill and the, the old people will sleep. So the, 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 the workers wouldn't have any problems at night. But what they didn't figure on was that this drug had the side effects, which, by the way, before it came out, they had hidden under the table the side effects. A lot of people died of heart failure, uh, kidney problems and whatever. And then there was some speculation going on because the patients that received this drug, it's called Cyprexa, the patients that received this drug also got diabetes. And who is the largest diabetes medication producer in the world? Eli Lilly and Company. So, speculating, speculating. So they were taken to court and they were fined. It's the largest Strafgeld in the history of the nation. Now there are a couple of other companies that were fined heavily for other drugs in the, the pharma industry and these are these are huge companies but it never came out. You know why? Because the press the press works also with the pharma industry just like the government does and I was surprised because the Germans they say, yeah, we, we write about all these things and whatnot, but they didn't write about this one. The pharma companies use the media to implant its dirty work on you. You never get to know the truth until it's too late. You have to raise your awareness to a higher level don't take for granted what your doctor is telling you because the doctors these days, let's say during my uh, working uh, uh, half of my life, they don't know much about medicine and they don't care much about their patients. They think about how much they can get paid. And this is how the pharma industry reigns stays in power, they buy the doctors. They pick them up when they're in medical school, fourth year, fifth year, pay their uh, tuition, train them. Because the doctors don't get information from anywhere else except the pharma industry. And I know, because when I was a salesman, the pharma company used to tell me, never talk side effects. They taught us something called FAB, F-A-B, features, advantages, and benefits. Um. Don't talk about side effects, that's taboo. I also know that they hide the dangerous side effects because I was in charge of a, a clinical study for Fluctine or Prozac. When the doctors came rushing into my office one day because we were running a small trial in one of the largest hospitals in Stockholm. The first week they started the trial, two of the patients tried to commit suicide. And this is a major side effect of these psychotropic drugs. They call them the SSRIs, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. That's a long fancy. It's called Akatisia. The pharma industry, by law, is not uh, obliged to give out information like that. Their friends in Washington made sure of that. Do you know that George Bush's father was on the board of directors of Eli Lilly and Company? One of the uh, political advisors in the George Bush administration, a guy called Mitch Daniels, he was a vice president with Eli Lilly. Do you know that uh, Rumsfeld, 
He was a vice president in the pharma industry. My boss, former boss, the guy who was two steps ahead of me, he was a vice president in London. He later became the CEO and chairman of the board of Eli Lilly and Company. He was made a member of the American Homeland Security Committee. And that is because Eli Lilly and Company is one of the largest political contributors to the Republican Party. And all of these companies, all of them, they have a hundred thousand dollar executive walking around in Washington and saying, hi, come to my barbecue this weekend. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the highest form of corruption. It's called lobbying. It's approved by your government. Well, I don't know which one I have. <laughs> All of them the same. So who are we dealing with? What are we doing? What are we setting our children open for? Now here's the, here's the good news, not, not for them. Sales of pharmaceuticals were dipping because Important. when you look at the logistics of the whole thing, the baby boomers are now us. Well, not, the all. Leute, die man not, not, baby not all, but uh, yeah. now we the baby boomers have gone into the uh, long-term treatment. You know me, you know, uh, I got a pharmacy that's about uh, 20 kilometers away from where I live for my medication with special delivery. You know why? I am one of their best customers. Now the baby boomers are going to die out in a while. Then the pharma has, uh, uh, companies have to find a new consumer. That is why they have turned their attention to the children. Have you guys heard of ADHS or ADHD? Yeah? Do you know what it is? What is it? Oh yeah? Well it's funny, but all these years I've been in medicine, nobody can come and tell me up till now what ADHD is. Yeah, syndrome makes it a sickness. Since they can't prove that this is a sickness, they change the S to D calling it disorder. And when it comes to that kind of disorder, for example, how do they measure serotonin in the brain of a child? Do you know how to do it, doctor? <laughs> With a Ouija board, that's, that's one way of it. Yeah, yeah, right. But I don't think the, 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 the pharma industry even knows about Ouija boards. What I'm saying is, they get the psychiatrists to sit down, you know, with their little bow ties. Psychiatrists, these are mad people. They might. <laughs> they sit every year, a few of them selected from around the world, and they sit in a room and they make up what they call the Bible for psychiatry, the DSM. If this Bible was so good and so needed and does an exact job, why did they change this, the rules in this uh, uh, Bible during the last few years so many thousands of times? So they're targeting the children, they're calling these new fancy diseases, they're targeting them with these drugs. Stratera. Prozac, Ritalin, Paxil, Zoloft. In 2007, they had a report from the UK, or it's a European report, it's where 157 people were either killed or serious side effects with this new drug, Stratera. Among them was a three-year-old German girl. I, 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 I find it difficult to even think or imagine that such a thing can happen. Now, my problem with these people is not revenge 
like some of the press people have been writing about in, in, uh, in Germany, out for revenge. No, no, I don't care about revenge. What I care about is that stop killing our children. Because when the politicians around the world when the politicians and all the other idiots like the psychiatrists for example they talk about we have to save the world, the environment the gases, the Silly. green, everything else all these people with the power in their hands to do something is not doing a goddamn thing they still try to manipulate and now they fix their eyes on the kids. I don't know about you guys in here, but that's not gonna happen to my kid. Never, never. The other thing that is very, very significant, when Volvo or Mercedes or Audi, they bring a series of cars on the market, and something went wrong, the computer system maybe didn't, doesn't function well, the brake system, something. What do they do? They bring them all in. They fix the problem and then they go back and sell it. When a pharmaceutical company brings a drug that's killing people, what happens? The stupid politicians and the authorities, they say, ah, okay. Uh, why don't you guys go back and take a look and see what is it that's wrong and, and see if you can fix the problem and still sell the drug. These companies still keep on selling the drugs. And I'm not talking about milliarden pro yar. That's a lot of money. Now the company I work for, this uh, uh, Lily, they said to me, and all my, uh, uh, my uh, uh, comrades and, okay. and, and, and workers. Oh, we work for the betterment of the human race. We work towards get, getting their wallets empty. But they claim that they give one million dollars a day to research. That's 365 million dollars a year. Now I have been with them, uh, that company, I was with them for 10 years. So you take 365 and multiply it by 10, that's over $3 billion. And they couldn't even bring out a better aspirin than they have. So, they're bringing SSRIs. They are called SSRIs, when they told me that this new uh, group of drugs was coming, they said, if we give it away, we will make money. That's how cheap it is to make. And Prozac, the drug that I bribed the Swedish government with to register, is the first ever blockbuster of the pharmaceutical industry. That is one billion dollars a year. I have a lot more, but right now, fortunately for me, that has become my insurance. Plus, I have to save a little bit for my next book. It's all coming. Hopefully, the book will be finished uh, by the end of this year, early next year. In the meantime, I will continue to speak wherever I'm invited, because I can write a hundred books if my message doesn't get to the people, to the consumers, nothing is going to happen. We have to get out of the grip of these people. Public outcry. Public outcry brought the Berlin Wall down. Public outcry can clean the pharma industry. Just get some control put some transparency into the business and when your politicians stop filling their pockets and start to do something, well, I, that's difficult. That's difficult to get politicians to do anything because they don't have anything to think with.
And you journalists, you journalists out there, maybe there are some journalists out there, and maybe there are good ones out there, but stop thinking of writing your articles that somebody's going to buy, or you're not going to get the Pulitzer Prize anyways. Start to write the truth. The truth is the only weapon. And I, I know because people all around, at least all around where I have been during the last year,